Hello and welcome back to Green Hill Today. My name is Lane Herbert. And I'm Tish Dingra. In this episode, we will be speaking to two Green Hill Upper School students who had great success in state and regional government competitions in both youth government and mock trial. We will also be speaking to Green Hill senior Georgia Sasso on her film Consent and her production process. So let's go to the interview. Hi, my name is Shriya Madhvanur and I'm a sophomore. Awesome. So Shriya, um, I know that you had a lot of success at your youth government competition. So for those who don't know, could you sort of give a little bit of background as to what the framework of the competition looks like when you're competing? Sure. So I competed in the legislative section and the way that that works is that you design and type up a bill on an issue that you're passionate about and then you go up there and you debate it and give speeches in its favor. You have a bunch of other delegates in the room who ask questions and also give proponent and opponent speeches on your bill and it's a lot of good natured debate and a lot of learning. So what bill did you end up writing for the competition? So my bill was about prohibiting SROs, which are school resource officers from schools. Cool. Um, and can you talk a bit through the process of when you had to first come up with the bill and then of course speak on it? Did you have any struggles with that, being that it was your own idea and you had to, to be the one defending it in front of other people? Well, of course, it's always gonna be a little intimidating and a little scary being up there and talking in front of all of those people, especially for when you're responding to opponent speeches and it kind of has to be a little impromptu. So you're kind of talking off of the tip of your tongue and yeah, you can be pretty afraid of messing up. But I would say that everybody else in that room is in the same position as you and everybody is talking on the spot and from the heart and at the end of the day, you're building better skills and coming out with even more confidence. So one thing that I had to really wrap my mind around was taking a leap and just going for it. What's the worst that can happen? A little, a little mess up. That's great. Um, and I, hearing about this, I want to hear more about when you're preparing for the competition. What 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 goes on there when you're thinking about preparing for the for the bill that I guess you have yet to write? What what goes in the process? Well, when we're preparing for the competition, first, you don't have to settle on an idea immediately. The motto that I use is that the first idea is definitely not the best idea or the one that you'll usually end up going with. So I make sure not to commit to a specific idea until I've researched many of them so I can settle on something that I think is the best option and having a wide variety of options to choose from, I think is super important. And I get when you're going through the competition, were you, did you have your, so you won the outstanding delegate or outstanding statesman, like the highest award you could get, were you, was that something you were gunning for or was it something that you just sort of were, I guess, surprised to get at the end of the process? I think that everybody that's there was there to win. Everybody's trying their best to speak out, but I, I always find that I go in there thinking only about the competition, but then I get lost in like passionately arguing for the things that I care about and it really just becomes a lot of fun. So at the end of the day, whether or not I win something, I'm usually always just glad for the experience. And I guess I was kind of gunning for that top award going in, but as the competition progressed, I realized that I didn't really mind so much what the end results were. And I was very glad that it turned out the way it did regardless. Uh, hi, I'm Kean Collins. Uh, I am in 12th grade. Um, so my first question is for your mock trial, Texas mock trial competition. For those who don't know, can you give a bit of background as to what format of the competition looks like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it runs pretty much like a normal trial. Um, we have per team, we have two attorneys usually. We have uh, three witnesses per side, and then we have one person who's the bailiff or, uh, but basically what they do is they're a timekeeper. Um, in a real trial, there aren't like time constraints on anything, but in this one, just for the sake of competition, there are, you know, time limits for each portion of the trial. Um, and then, so the way that it usually goes is you have opening statements that are made by each attorney, you know, talking about their side of the case. We've been given a case at this point that has uh, affidavits that like are full of witness testimony that our actual witnesses can pull from. We have like stipulated facts that are agreed upon by both sides. We have evidence packets, all that stuff. 
Um, so all the materials you would get in an actual case that you were trying. But anyway, so it starts off with opening statements by both attorneys. What they do is they get like three minutes for each of those. One side will make their opening statement. They're going to talk about what they need to prove in this trial and how they're going to prove it. And then the other side, if they're the defense, are going to say basically that we're going to prove the opposite of that. And then uh, if you're prosecution or if you're plaintiff, it's a, if it's a, a civil case, you're going to go first. Then what is going to happen there is you're going to have three witnesses uh, that you're going to call to the stand. Uh, that's called direct examination. You get 18 minutes for that total. You end up uh, your attorney who is doing your direct examination. That's what it's called when you're examining or questioning witnesses from your own side. Your attorney for your own side is going to question them and just kind of guide them through uh, the facts of the case from your perspective and then just try to provide all the evidence they need to prove the charge to make it stick. What's going to happen after that is that the attorney for the other side is going to question those same witnesses and try to get them to say things that are going to hurt your side. So they're just kind of manipulating the witnesses back and forth. And then the witnesses who are, of course, played by actual people are just doing their best to you know, stick to their guns and help their side. Then the other side is going to call their witnesses. You're going to do the same thing in reverse where each attorney questions a witness. And then at the end, they have uh, each attorney, it'll, it will be the other attorney on the team who didn't give the opening statement, but each attorney will deliver their closing statements. Um, if you're prosecution, you actually get a secondary closing statement as well. So you get, it's, it's called a rebuttal. So you get to just like provide a little extra info and you just recap what happened in the trial, how you met your burden of proof or how you didn't, or how the other side didn't meet it. And then it goes to a judge. Awesome. And for your case, we, so you were randomly, I guess you were given a case. So what, what was your case about? Like what, what was the subject matter for that? So we actually had two um, this year and it was, it, it's usually pretty cool because they tend to be based on real life cases. Last year wasn't too exciting. It was just based on like a traffic collision and it like alleged drunk driving, which is so exciting. Uh, and then this year though, we got, the first case we tried was, um, if you've seen the Netflix series, Waco, um, it's about like that whole cult and that the Branch Davidian compound and like the standoff between the ATF and like the siege of this uh, property in Waco, Texas. And uh, the second case was based on Tiger King, but they kind of like changed it so that the character who symbolized um, Joe Exotic was the one who got murdered and we were trying that as a murder case. So uh, they're usually based on real life. Awesome. And what would you say are some lessons you've learned from your experience, either coaching mock trial or participating in mock trial that sort of extends past like the direct applications you'd use for your mock trial cases? Yeah, uh, I mean, there's so many. Um, a lot of it is just learning um, to be confident, even, I mean, even if you don't know what you're talking about, uh, you can just, through mock trial, you can just learn to, to be confident and to argue something. And I have, I have seen so many people who entered like the team being like kind of meek and shy and afraid to speak up about stuff. And then when they get in the courtroom by the end of the season, they are some of the most tenacious, outspoken people you've ever seen. Well, awesome. But those are all the questions I had, Kian, but thank you so much. All right, cool. Yeah, of course. Anytime. Next, let's hear from Georgia Sasso. Hi, I'm Georgia Sasso, and I'm a senior. Awesome. Um, so, Georgia, I know that you are the director of the film Consent. Um, I guess for those who haven't seen the movie or aren't familiar with student video production, could you explain a bit behind the process you had when you were brainstorming on possible subjects for your film? Yeah, sure. So, my consent film I did separately from AVP. It wasn't a, a film that I did in AVP, but I used a lot of help from Mr. Doyle and from AVP people. It was kind of a project that I did independently, and I just wanted to make a film about it because, you know, consent is a really big issue right now, and it's very personal to me. I've heard a lot of stories about it from my friends and people who I know, so I felt like it was a very important topic to kind of tackle in film and I love doing film so I chose that avenue. Awesome um, and so I, after you decided on your topic for the film I guess what, what 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 do you as a director do next when you're thinking about reeling in potential people to come help you in the process? Yeah so I started with research. I read about four books on consent and just got really familiar with the topic, got really familiar with all different kinds of perspectives of it. And then I started by conducting interviews. A lot of them were 
people who I know, people who they all lived in Dallas, people who go to lots of different schools, some Green Hill, some not. And I interviewed people over Zoom and recorded the audio and kind of started using that, putting it together. I interviewed, I think, about 20 people. I didn't end up using everyone and everything that everyone said in the final version. The interviews were 30 minutes to an hour each, so I couldn't have, but I kind of cut it all together and formed almost like a podcast and then started doing the visuals over that. So. Right. Um, and you said that you took on this project apart from AVP, but are you also involved in video production at Greenhill? Yes, I am involved in AVP. Okay. Um, and so I guess my next question is, so um, I guess, what did you sort of go to Mr. Doyle for when you're thinking about making this movie that's sort of not in parallel with this class? Yeah, I went to Mr. Doyle for pretty much everything. He watched the film a bunch of times. He gave me critiques and I would fix them. And he also helped a lot with the, in the film, there are graphics of statistics and quotes and stuff like that. And he made all of those. He knows how to use Photoshop and I don't. So he was very involved in this whole process. A lot of AVP students were, I think in total, at least 20 to 25 people helped me with this film, so. And I guess on the notes, how, how does it feel for you I, as a senior graduate in Green Hill? Obviously, you've been very involved in video production to have like people from video production of all different skills come together and help you in this project that's really personal to you. I mean, it was great. I People were so open to helping, which was one of the coolest things. I had no one, no one from Green Hill at least, who said no any time I asked for help. Everyone was just very open and very accepting, which was different because I usually, when I do stuff that's creative, I tend to kind of work on my own just because I'm shy reaching out for help. But there were so many things in this film that I didn't know how to do on my own and I had to reach out for help, which was great because people were so open and so just willing to be there whenever I needed them to be and do whatever I needed them to do. It's it's just a very supportive and um, caring community in AVP, which I'm very grateful for. And that's all we have for you on this episode of Green Hill Today. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Green Hill Today, and we'll see you next time on Green Hill Today.